Hey guys and welcome to the channel. In today's video I'm going to tell you guys the five things I hate most about my 2016 Stage 2 Plus Bren Tuned WRX. Why should I be the one that tells you about five things that I hate and you might hate if you are looking to purchase a WRX or you own one? Because this is my second WRX. I had a limited 2015 before and this is a 2016 base. I've taken it all the way to Stage 2. I brought it to Bren Tuning. I've had it Bren Tuned. It's quite a fun car now, it makes good horsepower, and I know a lot about these cars because I've been in them for so many miles, and I've taken them apart, and I've done all these projects with them. So this should be a fun video, and if you've seen my other videos, if you haven't, you should subscribe and check them out, but if you've seen my other videos, you know that I love these cars, I love the platform, but there are things that really bother me about them, and in this video, I'm just gonna outline those things, so I hope you enjoy it. I hope this is a little different from everybody else that makes videos on why they hate things about their WRX. Maybe it'll be the same. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it though, and let's get right into it. Let's do it. There are a lot of great things about these cars, but I'm not gonna beat around the bush. I'm gonna give you guys the real down low about the cars. And the number one thing about this car that I hate, I just need to kind of show you. So let me let me show you for a second, because it's it's uh it takes only a second to really it really only takes a second to show you the main thing. I mean, there are plenty of problems with these cars, but one of them's easy if I can even open the hood. So the number one thing on our list really is that the stock WRX is really slow. And if you want to have fun with it and make some power, it's really expensive. So I think the number one negative, and I think this is a huge negative because this is such a tuner's car, is that it's hard to have fun without spending a lot of money on your WRX. And the engines are kind of fragile in that if you want to make a lot of power, you really need to spend the money to do it safely. And you still risk blowing an engine or blowing your transmission or doing something like that. So my number one complaint is that if I'm spending $25,000 on a new WRX, which I bought this used, but if I'm spending $25,000 on a sports sports car, it should, it should be pretty quick. And I think that the WRX should be able to perform and you shouldn't have to spend thousands of dollars to get it up to you know quick speeds. That being said, you know maybe you wanna do this over buying like a used Audi S3. But regardless, my number one on the list is that it's expensive to modify and it's slow in stock form. Number two on my list is the stock ride height. I think I have some pretty banging wheels in this car. Obviously they're dirty, I've been driving this car a lot. But this isn't great. I mean, this 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 stinks. And I don't want to have to spend fifteen hundred dollars on lowering this a little bit. And especially, you know, it, it it's not exactly where I want to put my money. So I think that Subaru could have, and I think that it's just a downside of WRXs in general, is they ride super high. These are eighteen-inch wheels, and you know they don't look it because there's so much stupid space. And even if I drop this, my wheel well is so large. So. I think this is number two on my list. It's something that I notice all the time, and I think it's something that if you don't spend the money, the WRXs just really don't look as good. So who notices something different about the front of my car? I mean, if you're a WRX owner, and we're not talking my unpainted front bumper, my front, we're not talking about my unpainted front lip, because I know that it looks like trash, but I've this is just rode through the winter season, and I don't want to paint it before the snow falls. Regardless, number three on my list is how not aggressive the front of these cars look out of the factory. And I don't understand why Subaru can't make these stock, but you know, one of my gripes is that I needed to spend, and if this crow shuts up at some point, but I needed to spend a ton of time and work. I gotta put some badge overlays, a plate, this actually, this is the plate that the guy sold me the car with. But then my headlights, look at the headlights. I had to paint them, put sea lights in them, do all these things to them, so this car looks aggressive. It takes a lot of work to make these unique. So many people drive them. And I think an aggressive front is really what makes these cars unique and really makes them look good. So it's a bummer that they don't look like this out of the box. Number four on my list, let me ask you a question. Do you enjoy listening to music in your car? Do you enjoy listening to audiobooks? Do you enjoy listening to the radio? Do you like listening to something through your car? If so, the base and premium WRX that don't have the Harman Kardon package is definitely not for you. I'm sitting in my car for a reason, to point you to my door speaker or any of the speakers in my car. The WRX sound system is terrible. It's, it's so bad that when deciding on what exhaust I wanted for my car, I decided I'm going to get the loudest thing possible. Simply because if I choose to listen to music, it's so bad that it's not even worth listening to. I've got to say, audiobooks are even hard to listen to because 
it's just so distorted and you're like, what the heck am I listening to? So, I mean, the big gripes is there's no bass in this car, there's no audio control, the speakers aren't very powerful. I mean, if I want to listen to music at what would be mid-range for a normal car, I'm on almost full volume. And then it sounds all weird because everything's distorted and it's trying to make adjustments. And, you know, this car has one of those things where if you floor it, it adjusts the volume. And if you turn that off, it still, I feel like it still does it. Maybe it doesn't, maybe I'm crazy, but the sound systems on these cars absolutely suck. And I've had a Seikan Android head unit in my last one, and I wanted to put it in this one, but, and I'm still gonna do it, but I couldn't find the time because why put it in if I can't really control my audio and I don't really want to use the head unit because I don't want to listen to any music. I mean, for some reason I feel like the CVT that I had that was a limited that didn't have the Harman Kardon had a better speaker system. Maybe it did have a better speaker system and I'm just ignorant of the fact that limiteds have more speakers or something that don't have the Harman Kardon. But I'm in a base WRX right now, this is what I'm sitting in, and the sound system is just atrocious. I, this is almost the worst one. This is almost worse than how expensive these cars are to modify, because it makes such a big deal. Road trips are so hard in this car, because I can't really listen to music. If I have friends, sometimes, sometimes I want to go places with friends, and I love driving, so I want to take this car, but kind of like, as a group, we decide not to take my car because we can't listen to music, and that is, such a bummer. I, ca I can't even tell you that I have a car that I love to drive, that's designed to drive, that's designed to like have all this fun and seat four people, but four people not want to sit in it because I can't listen to music while I drive and have all this fun. So that is definitely a bummer. Let's move on to number five. Number five on the list is going to be something that's somewhat controversial and somewhat counters a lot of things that I've said on my channel about the WRX community. But one of, the, one of the things that I dislike about having a WRX is how many other WRXs there are out there and how many people are buy, buying WRXs and how many people are driving them and how many people are dailying them and how many people are doing super ricey things to them. And I guess it's just a problem of having an inexpensive sports car. But my biggest gripe is that like I enjoy saying hi to everybody and waving to everybody and seeing a bunch of WRXs out there. But ultimately, as somebody that's into cars, I want something that's very personal in my car, and I want something that's unique. And prior to the two WRXs that I've owned and my beater cars, I had a Genesis Coupe, and that was really my first sports car. And I was up in New Hampshire when I was when I was owning the Genesis Coupe, and not really, and nobody really had them. Like I, I only saw another Genesis Coupe maybe two or three times in my two years of ownership of the Genesis Coupe. So it was a fairly unique car, and anything that I did to it was fairly unique, just because there weren't as many out there. And one of the things that I really dislike about the WRX right here is that I just see so many of them. And again, I enjoy seeing everybody saying hi, but I feel like my car is too common. And one of the things that I like about having a sports car and a car that I'm trying to make personal is that then it becomes uncommon. You know, it's 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 more unique. And because there's so many people out there with WRXs, no matter really what I do with this car, someone else is going to have done it and I'm going to probably see them just because there are so many of them. So one thing that I think about in the ownership of this car and when I choose to move on from this car and get the next car is I'm really going to look for something that isn't very common. And I don't mean to say that I'm looking to drive some type of weird, crazy, like a Lotus. Not, not weird or crazy, but not very common. You know, I'm, I'm not necessarily looking for a Lotus, but something maybe like an Audi S3 or an RS3. Something that has a big, has a big brand behind it, but doesn't have that many people that drive the cars. So it's still unique and the things that I do to the car are still fairly unique. I'm basically going to look for a car that I don't see that often around me. And unfortunately, I see tons of WRXs. So I'm sorry if number five is kind of controversial, but I know a lot of car people are out there and they want something that's unique. They don't want just your run of the mill car. And that's why a lot of us don't buy Civic SIs and things like that. Regardless, we won't get too far into it. I hope you enjoyed the video of the five things that I hate most about the car. I think I'm gonna make a separate video about the sound system because in reality, I think the sound system is number one for me. This is a great car. I love this car to death. Maybe I'll make a video of the five things I love but if you liked this video and you watched this far through, please give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Uh, I'd love for a comment. Let me know things that you hate about WRXs, even if you don't own one. Something that you see on the exterior of a WRX or something that you've heard of. Let me know if you hate that aspect of a WRX and maybe, maybe I make another video because there's so many things, unfortunately, that I could say that I hate about these WRXs. I just outlined five that bother me on a daily basis. And you know, the head and the front grille doesn't bother me on a daily basis anymore, but I spent a lot of time changing it and I need to paint the, the I need to paint the front lip and who knows I might wrap this car but thank you guys for watching I do appreciate it and uh, yeah have a great day